Greetings, everyone. This is Christopher Messina coming at you from the Messy Time Studio. When we began this podcast, we did so with the idea that we were going to give you clarity in terms of national and international events that we were going to explain to you who was lying to you and why and what their reasons might be uh, for doing so. And one of the things that has jumped up to top of the list recently, it being May of 2021, is the Abraham Accords. And we're gonna discuss that in a little bit of depth today. Uh, I was prompted to do so uh, after a number of rather disconcerting conversations in the last few days with people that I would expect to have a pretty good understanding of both the existence of this groundbreaking treaty or set of treaties between Israel and a number of her, her Arab neighbors. Uh, but the response I got told me just how deeply embedded misinformation has become in the American media and political culture. So for those who don't know, the Abraham Accords, uh, broadly speaking, were signed on August 13th, 2020, between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, with additional signatories being Sudan and Morocco and Bahrain. Uh, and the idea being that, you know, years of screaming and yelling and two-party state solutions and, 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 and you know, the Palestinians being at the so-called center of every uh, Middle Eastern peace debate has given way to the idea that, you know, peaceful, peaceful coexistence and increased trade between nations usually is the best way to preserve peace and, and create peace where there was none before. So in my lifetime, I would never have expected to see uh, commuter flights between Tel Aviv and Abu Dhabi as now exist, which is phenomenal news. Um, on a slight, you know, uh, tangential but related note, you know, this is the kind of thing um, bringing together parties that uh, supposedly in the Western media and other media's narratives uh, are irreconcilable foes was utterly impossible and ridiculous. And so when President Trump uh, announced the Abraham Accords, there's a huge amount of, of odd dismissiveness, uh, which is strange because one of the <clears throat> hallmarks of the last few years, some people have called it Trump derangement syndrome, whatever the cause is, is that you know, even when his administration did something really, really great, his political opponents are so blind with hatred that they can't even acknowledge what is one of the most signal achievements uh, in international relations and peace in years, the Obama administration shipped literal, literal pallets of billions of dollars of American cash to the Iranian mullahs in a vain hope that that was gonna buy good behavior. And all they did was turn around and use that money to blow up more Jews and Americans around the world, bizarrely. Uh, the Biden administration looks to resurrect that really great deal that uh, Secretary Kerry and, and President Obama signed. That's disastrous. Um, irrespective on the Abraham Accords, you know, we now have, you know, lots and lots of, 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 of increasing trade and business relationships between the UAE and Israel uh, and Morocco, great country where I used to live uh, in Israel, wonderful stuff happening. And it's important to know that these things are going on because cursory glance through the usual suspects of the American media, um, they either don't mention it or they try in some weird way to make this sound like a step backwards as opposed to a step forward. Uh, you've got completely uh, Jew-hating lunatics like Rashida Tlaib, who is a congresswoman uh, from Michigan or, or, or Detroit, sorry, um, who, you know, they desperately uh, want to keep fanning the flames of this hatred. They want to keep fanning this fantasy uh, that the, the Palestinians are this marvelous peace-loving group that if only the mean Israelis uh, would get their boot off their necks, uh, would flourish. But you know, nothing's been further from the truth. Their entire ideology has not changed, or at least the people have seized control of their political processes, not the people themselves who probably like everyone else just want normal relations and peace. Um, they're still committed to this psychotic and increasingly quixotic ideal that Israel is going to be pushed into the sea. Well, uh, 
They're not. They've been offered, you know, multiple opportunities for economic advancement over the years when Israel left parts of what were formerly occupied territories and left behind perfectly functioning things like greenhouses and water systems and the rest of it. Um, the lunatic ideologues in those in those quote unquote governments um, tore up uh, all these marvelous pieces of infrastructure because you know the evil Jews and Zionists had had created them. Absolute madness, just madness. It's like finding a bag of money on the side of the road and burning it because your enemy left it there. It's just crazy. Uh, but anyway, for those who aren't paying any attention and would like to learn more, please feel free to go uh, take a look. Even on the U.S. State Department's website, there's a great uh, declaration, which is worth uh, reading. Uh, so we, the undersigned, recognize the importance of maintaining and strengthening peace in the Middle East and around the world based on mutual understanding and coexistence, as well as respect for human dignity and freedom including religious freedom. We encourage efforts to promote interfaith and intercultural dialogue to advance a culture of peace among the three Abrahamic religions and all humanity. We believe that the best way to address challenges is through cooperation and dialogue and that developing friendly relations among states advances the interests of lasting peace in the Middle East and around the world. We seek tolerance and respect for every person in order to make this world a place where all can enjoy a life of dignity and hope, no matter their race, faith, or ethnicity. We support science, art, medicine, and commerce to inspire humankind, maximize human potential, and bring nations closer together. We seek to end radicalization and conflict to provide all children a better future. We pursue a vision of peace, security, and prosperity in the Middle East and around the world. In this spirit, we warmly welcome and are encouraged by the progress already made in establishing diplomatic relations between Israel and its neighbors in the region under the principles of the Abraham Accords. We are encouraged by the ongoing efforts to consolidate and expand such friendly relations based on shared interests and a shared commitment to a better future. How wonderful is that? Clear, simple statement of real intent of countries working together. You know, after these, these accords were signed, um, the uh, town hall in Tel Aviv was lit up in the colors of the UAE flag. It's absolutely phenomenal. And I know from all the colleagues I'm working with uh, in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and Israel um, and, and elsewhere that the, 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 the fruits of this are being born right now, right? Israelis are welcomed with open arms. They land in Abu Dhabi and vice versa. Um, there's a great future ahead for the Middle East. There's great peace. Uh, for those who never worked in the region or lived in the region, you know, if I were sitting in Tel Aviv and I wanted to go to Abu Dhabi uh, uh, six months ago, I had to fly to Frankfurt and then fly back from Frankfurt, you know, back to the Middle East. Completely ridiculous. So there are great things coming. Uh, pay deep attention. And if you're wondering, you know, in this instance, you know, if you're an American who is lying to you and why, you go to answer that for yourself. Why is this signal achievement of the supposedly you know, insoluble problem of, of the Middle East and Israel and Palestine. Amazingly enough, enough we cut through that Gordian knot. And amazingly enough, um, direct communication and cooperation work as they have everywhere else. So, you know, the people who are lying to you or, or not telling you that this Abraham Accord, if it exists, are those who, for whatever reason, make their living off of continuing strife and off of the continuing um, the supposed divisiveness that they are trying to impose on all of this by claiming that we have irreconcilable tribal or racial or other differences that will never be fixed um, unless, of course, we you know, tax the heck out of some people and you know, give money to others. I, God knows what their, 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 their proposals are. They're, they're, they're all insane. But they always seem to involve um, taxation and restriction of freedom of speech, oddly. So look into that. Check out the Abraham Accords. Find out why one of the lasting gifts to all humanity, and certainly to the American taxpayer in terms of you know money not going to be spent on further wars, uh, was this signal peace agreement that is only expanding. You know, Saudi Arabia and Qatar and, and others will soon be joining um, this this you know, loose conglomeration called the Abraham Accords, which just means that there's peace in the region and free trade and free travel, and and all the great things that we take for granted, say going from you know Virginia to California. Um, or from Luxembourg to France are now going to be possible in the region. And there are great things ahead for, you know, inc incredibly dynamic cultures and societies full of people who want to work hard, provide a better life for their families. And now under this new regime, uh, 
the regime under this new set of kind of accords, this new dispensation, uh, are free to do so uh, by sh shucking off the shackles of hatred of the past and moving forward into a prosperous future. We wish everyone who is involved uh, in, in increasing business, commercial, and, and scientific ties in the region, we wish them all the best. Uh, and we look forward to seeing what a prosperous future the Middle East has.